it's John Hoysens, Tom, 2015 NAM show. I'm here with John Pace, and I'm in the Celestian Speaker booth. And uh, I think Celestian Speakers has a huge history in uh, rock That's music, right? right? Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, the, the question that I really want to ask you is the companies that bought these speakers to put in their amplifiers, because I don't believe that Celestian had an amp. Did no, they, that's right. They yeah. never made a, like a Celestian amplifier. They no, only no. make the speakers. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, in your uh, memory, right, what would be uh, some of the companies that uh, use your speakers that we'd all probably know about? Well, of course, we're very famous for the Celestian Blue, which is the world's first uh, purpose-built guitar speaker, and that first went into the Vox AC15 way back in the late 50s. Okay. So uh, he got it got um, given a coat of blue paint in the 1960, and uh, you know the kind of the rest was history. So that was used by um, you know George Harrison with the Beatles and onwards, really the Rolling Stones right. used that. And of course, um, Marshall would be the next name on the so list. So we started with Fox, we started with Marshall. Those uh, are you know pretty. Yeah, yeah. You know, so somebody I'm, asked George Harrison. He said, "How do you get your sound?" He says, "Well, I use a Gretsch guitar and a Vox amplifier." There you go. Yeah. So with a Celestian blue inside. Oh, I'm looking around your booth, and I see all kinds of things that might not necessarily be guitar amplifier speakers. So that's correct. Yeah. There's huge. Uh, are those PA speakers those over there? Those are PA subwoofers over there. Yeah. So subwoofers for so, bass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so apart from the guitar speaker, the guitar speakers are a very important part of our business. Okay. But we also service the pro audio sector. Okay. So from subwoofers to line arrays. To small so club speakers, spe you know. Speakers, anything. Yeah, speakers, anything. You know, that's you know, it's the transducer, the speaker inside the box. That's our expertise. Uh, in what way do you think a Celestian speaker would have been different from a Jensen speaker, if you can even uh, quantify that? Well, I guess because I mean, back in the day, Jensen were the U.S. built speaker, and Celestian were the U.K. built speaker. Um, we kind of evolved in, in, separately. In that way. Yeah, two separately, two yeah. different islands. So, so yeah, so the. You know, the Celestians were tuned to work with the Vox amps and the Marshall amps. And just, they just kind of evolved in a different direction, what, whereas the Jensen's were used with the Fender amps. So, different vibe. Do you think those people ever, like, uh, communicate with each other to develop their designs, or do you think it was all separate uh, rivers, separate channels? Uh, I think the answer to that is lost in the midst of time. <laughs> I have no idea. Now I'm pulling it'd be, it'd, strong, be kind, it'd be kind of cool to, to think maybe they did. But. Okay. Okay, so now here... We've come, we've come through a lot of history with this speaker. It's, uh -huh. been, it's been on a lot of records. Uh, people have heard it. Maybe I know it's been a Celestian speaker, but there's all these famous bands, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Where are we at right now with Celestian as far as uh, companies that... I know it's not only Marshall. There's plenty of other companies that might handle a Celestian, right? Well, you know, you, you name it, and we're, we're probably there. You know, from, from the... From the the, the, the big guys, Marshall and Fox, and uh, people and like Orange, uh, Orange Mesa amps, Boogie, Orange amps, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Fender. I mean, I even think Fender, yeah, even yeah. Fender, put Celestians Absolutely, in some of their yeah, models, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I people mean, could get that British or English sound, right? Yeah, yeah they can mix it up with the with the American circuit and the British sounding speaker. Yeah, yeah. So uh, PV would be another would be another company. You know, it's really uh, a successful, uh, uh, very uni successful uni yeah. universally successful yeah. company, wouldn't you absolutely, say? Absolutely. Yeah. Even yeah. if you look down at the smaller, the boutique guys that you see a lot of these days, you know, yeah, those guys are turning on to, to Celestia. What would be like uh, in your estimation? From where we are right now into the future, what what might we could expect from, say, a company like Celestian besides uh, the same thing they've been doing, but new design? Is there something that we don't know about that's coming out? Well, absolutely. We're, we're, we're debuting uh, a new speaker today, uh, this weekend at, uh, at the NAMM show, a 91 Alnico speaker. So, obviously, that very first guitar speaker was, a, was the Celestian Blue, a 15-watt speaker. We've now got the technology to to provide that vintage Alnico tone but with a lot higher power you know and as you know modern amps tend to have more power than they did back in the day so you really think it's really capturing the uh, the traditional tone yeah, it's I, not uh, just a ma makeup thing no i genuinely believe it captures the, the celestial tone yeah you know, we wouldn't have released it if we didn't think that that saves hunting around doesn't it absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time today, John. Hey, this is John at the NAMM Show 2015, and yes, I played for the Celestian Speakers through my Marshalls. Bluesy News 2015 at the NAMM Show. Thank you very much. Good call, Dale. Yeah, that's the first time. Yeah,